Now, I thought what we would start off with is just a, a slip form barrier. So something like you see when you're driving down the, uh, the interstate, something like that, where maybe you have a continuous concrete barrier. We want a custom line style to represent something like that. How would we go about doing something along those lines? Well, now here, I'm just going to switch over to a, a DGN file that I have where we've got some 3D geometry. Maybe something we can take a look at to kind of get us a bit of a, a jump start. Now, I'm a big fan of looking at custom line styles and seeing what other people have done. That includes the default Bentley ones, maybe something from your local transportation department, whatever it happens to be. If this is new to you, that's a great way. Look at an example to see how they put things together and what might make up a custom line style. Now, to start with, I have a couple of examples of that geometry that I want to talk to you about here as we go. Now, to start with, we're going to make something to represent a concrete barrier wall, a slip form barrier. Now that might look something like you see here displayed within the view window. Maybe that's kind of what our, our net result is that we're looking for. We want to be able to place that with any type of geometry placement command, a line, a smart line, a B-spline curve, something like this. With, with that in mind, again, sometimes it's nice to see other examples of this. And the geometry itself can actually be quite sophisticated. So here, as an example, is a, a simple guardrail that was generated. But again, the geometry itself can be a bit more complex. Here you can see that we've got some more complex surfaces represented for the rail itself. We've got things like extruded 3D geometry to represent the posts that we see, etc. So there can be a lot of this. Depends on how far you want to go. And so you need to think about the intended usage of the line style itself, as I've mentioned to you a couple of times now. You can easily overdo what this is meant to uh, be applied to in, inside of the microstation environment. Now, the guardrail that you see here, as an example, it doesn't have any end treatments on that. Now, you could create a line style that has the end treatments just kind of built in if you wish to, but in certain circumstances, it might be better to go in and do something like the end treatments on this. Maybe your uh, uh, different uh, types of, of end treatments that you have, like a deflector or delineator or something like that that you want, not through the line style itself, but maybe by a cell placement. So as an example here, we've got uh, a simple example of a possible end treatment situation, kind of a scenario, if you would. Now, the one that you're seeing that I'm showing to you right here, this could be incorporated into the line style definition if you wish to. However, it may be better just simply to come in here and place it as part of the actual placement command. Use it as a cell. So those of you that are working with something like open roads as an example, you can have open roads as part of a feature definition place an end treatment for you by attaching a cell to the end of the line as it's being drawn. And so this can help simplify things a little bit, make the files a little bit more compact and, and so forth. Cut down on that file size. That's always a good thing, right? But again, you can put as much complexity into this as you see fit. But as I had mentioned to you, you don't want to add any level of detail that you can't easily see. And here, for instance, in the, uh, the head that we see that's being used on this particular section of guardrail, it does not contain things like bolt heads and so forth because literally it's just going to be overkill for how we're using it. So but I hope you get the idea here. Again, just kind of follow a few of the, the guidelines and the rules that I had just mentioned to you. Now, they can represent literally just about anything anything that gets repeated on a regular basis. And so here we see a, kind of a flexible ground-mounted delineator. You could use this in, in parking lots. You could use this on a, a renovation project that you're working on. I mean, there's lots of different possibilities. But again, it can be much more than what, I'm shown, uh, what I've shown to you here so far. And so what we want to do now is come in and take a look at how to create the geometry and then build a 3D line style. Now, as I had mentioned to you, we're going to start off with that concrete barrier wall. And I wanted you to at least have an idea of what it might look like. Now, there's a couple of things to keep in mind here. When you're working with 3D custom line styles, most of the geometry that's going to be represented by the line style definition itself is going to be done through cells that you create, through point cells that are part of the line style. And with that in mind, then, there's a couple of things to keep in mind here. Uh, one of which is, that when we come in and do this, it can't bend a cell. 
Cells don't deflect in any way. They're always linear when they're placed through this custom line style definition. So with something like the barrier wall that we see here, you can't draw long sections of it if you're going to use it on a curve. And the reason for that, it essentially strokes that curve with the sections that you're seeing. You're definitely going to see some breaks in that. It's not going to look really smooth to you. Well, we'll talk about that more here as we continue along. So kind of the first thing that maybe to think about as far as the creation is concerned is just drawing a profile in this case for what we want the barrier wall to look like. Now you can already even see a hint here when I rotated the view one display a little bit as to how might we might want to put this together. So I'm going to start off by just doing nothing more than growing, grabbing a, a simple drawing command. Whatever it happens to be, I'm going to generate a profile for the barrier itself. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and use Smart Line. I'm going to use AccuDraw to help me place it with exact dimensions. And I'm going to join the pieces together so that when I get finished, this is essentially going to be a, a polygon that we have, a closed shape. And the reason for that is I'm then going to use this with some extrusion tools inside of uh, the 3D commands that Connect Edition provides to us. Now, where I get started, it really doesn't matter, to be honest with you. I can always take it and move it into place relative to how I'm going to use it here in a bit. And again, that'll make sense as we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is just start to draw. And I'm going to rotate the uh, AccuDraw compass relative to whatever the orientation is that helps me work the way that I want. Now, essentially, this is going to be a cell, as I had mentioned to you, and very similar to maybe other cells that you created, we have to have a defined orientation with it. What's kind of its normal direction, if you would? And so a good rule of thumb is to work from left to right relative to a top-down display. Since I went ahead and rotated the view, I'm just simply going to use AccuDraw to help me facilitate that process by rotating AccuDraw to a side rotation, which is what you see right now. And so from there, it's just simply a matter of drawing. But one of the things that I told you, keep in mind the working units that you're working with. Now, I know the dimensions for my barrier in inches. I, I have some standards for this that I'm going to follow. But right now, my working units, if I look at them, I see a colon in that X field, for instance, for AccuDraw. Here, I'll even bring this up to make that a, a little more apparent. So the colon is the delimiter between the master and minor units of measurement. We ought to go look at what those are as we start to do this. And so I'm simply going to come in here and head over to the Utilities tab here in the Drawing Workflow. And this is where I'll find Drawing Scale. Drawing Scale is a simple, easy to way to kind of come in here and tell what it is you have for working units. And as you can well see right now, my working units are set to feet and inches, master units, subunits, feet and inches. I just need to take that into account. So when I generate this, this is now based upon survey feet as the unit definition. All right, good enough. I'm aware. I'm good to go. So the base of my barrier, I'm going to make two feet wide. And so using just some simple AccuDraw techniques, I'm going to go ahead and do that. We'll type in a, a two here as far as the, the length of the line segment. There we go. So two feet wide. And now I'm going to do the height that I want for the base of the barrier. Now, typically from ground level, I want this short vertical section, the one that goes straight up, to be four inches long. But if we have a surface that's not perfectly horizontal, it's not completely flat, this is going to sit down in the surface a little bit. And I want it to not look like it's going to float, but actually kind of sit where it's supposed to. So we're going to exaggerate that a little bit. You can see that even in the render display in view number two, my little construction lines to help kind of get acclimated to the orientation of the geometry. I'm actually going to accentuate that depth a little bit here. So I'm going to give it the four inches above the surface that I want for the vertical line, but I'm going to add, let's just say, an extra four inches so I can sink it down four inches into the surface of the roadway. That way it never looks like it's floating out there. So I'm going to give it this vertical distance, we'll say uh, maybe eight inches, something like that. All right. And then it's just a matter of kind of plugging along here and continuing to go and do what I want to do. So my next section here, I'm going to make it 32 inches high. So we'll type in colon 32 for the vertical. I want to go ahead and slope this a little bit. It's actually going to go in five and three quarter inches. So I'm going to go ahead and type that in. And you can kind of start to see now what's happening here. And so for me, it's just now a matter of kind of rinse and repeat here as I go, creating the geometry that I'm going to use to represent what it is that we're seeing. Something kind of like that. Uh, we're going to slope this line segment as well. And so we'll again do the, the 32 inches. 
something like that. I'll use a little AccuDraw here to kind of help me out a bit. And so now, got our 32 inches down. There we go. And we're going to kind of lock that in directly above my starting point. So something kind of like this. So we've got a, a simple profile. And I'm trying to rotate a little bit here just to show you that that is flat. It's planar. But we've got just a, a basic profile that we're going to work with. Now, again, you can use any starting point you want. And in this particular situation, what we're going to do is take that profile, and maybe my dimensions, they aren't quite right, are they? They don't look right, but we're just going to go with it anyway here. Um, we're just simply going to extrude that out to create some solid geometry. Now, in the Connect Edition, those creation tools for this purpose are located in the modeling workflow. And what we're going to do is just simply grab a solid extrusion command. Now, one of the things that I had mentioned to you was keep it as simple as possible, if you can. And so when we come in and we create something like a solid here in the connect edition here, I'm going to use the extrude command to do so. When I do this, by default, it typically tries to make a parametric solid. Now, while parametric solids are supported within custom line style definitions, they do add to the size just a little bit of the cells that we're going to use to create the line style from. So parametrics, if you need it, you can use it. But if you don't have to, I would leave the parametric disabled. When we come in and we extrude this, you might ask, well, gee, how far do we need to extrude this out? How long do you want this increment, kind of this, this step to be, if you would? And, uh, you know, honestly, this is going to be represented for whatever distance it needs to go to display the, the section of the slip form barrier. And as a part of that, then, one of the things that I know is I'm probably going to end up using this on curves and so forth. And so we come back into that stroking concept that I talked to you a little bit about earlier. So if we have long sections, and it has to bend long sections on a curve, when it does so, it's going to justify it from one point and one point only. It can't bend the barrier. This is going to end up being a cell. It can't bend the barrier. The barrier section is going to be straight. So for some things, it makes sense to make them a little bit longer. But in the case of something like the slip form barrier, I'm actually going to extrude this only a very short distance. In this case, I'm going to do, let's say, maybe six inches or half of a foot for the extrusion distance. Then once that's done, this is what I'm going to use to create the cell from and just have it represent that over and over and over again along the length of the line segment that the 3D line style is going to be tied to. Now, when I do so, by doing a shorter distance, that stroking effect becomes less apparent. Now, that means there's going to be more of them, right? But it kind of treats it like a shared representation if you're familiar with that concept. And so it usually isn't that big of a deal, to be honest with you. So a shorter section in this case is probably going to work out best for me. Now, I told you I could create that anywhere, and I'm going to use this to create a cell. But to help out a little bit, I have to have a precise point for the origin of the cell when I incorporate this into the custom line style. And so I'm going to move this now to a very specific location, and I'll show that to you here as we go. I'm just simply going to grab a basic microstation move command, and what I want to do is I want to locate the bottom of the barrier, kind of the bottom of this section, if you would, the center of it relative to where the origin of the cell is going to be. So I just drew a couple of construction lines to help me out a little bit, to help me orient that. Maybe as I rotate around, you can kind of see that relative to the example that I drew ahead of time for you here. And so all I'm going to do is move this so it has kind of a similar placement concept. Here, I know I'm kind of getting it centered up one axis. Then maybe I'm going to do the same thing for the other axis. We'll center it kind of on the, on the uh, x-axis now. But remember, I want this to be recessed a little bit. I want four inches of the vertical to be above the surface of, in this case, maybe the roadway that I'm placing it relative to or whatever it happens to be. But I gave myself a little leeway so it doesn't look like it's floating. So I'm going to move this not only horizontally, but I'm going to move this in the vertical z direction. Again, just rotating AccuDraw around a little bit here. And we're just going to sink that down so that it's going to end up being kind of in the surface as we do so. Now, in the render display, this is much, much more apparent. You can see I'm going to place the origin at the intersection of those green lines. And that will give me a little bit of kind of uh, play in this, if you would, setting it below the level of the, of the surface of the, the roadway that we're going to place it relative to. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, 
consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.